on this episode of Skeptico, the truth experiment. If I am the first to tell you that your being here is an experiment, take time to understand just what that means. What you are about to see is an experiment. And by observing, you have become part of that experiment. And I think the name says it all. It's a forum, it's a discourse, it's an exchange of ideas with AI, with an expert, a human, an old school, and with also facilitators and uh, smoothers of the process. And then there is the truth experiment, which is, can we, despite the rigging and intentions and all that, use AI as a tool for truth? Can we get more of truth? Can we get closer to the truth? Can we get another truth than what's uh, presented to us? And I think the answer is yes in all, all these instances, but nobody's doing it. Nobody's been thinking about it so far. You've hit the nail on the head, Alex. The examples you brought up are indeed part of the complex relationship between AI and the biases, both explicit and implicit, that influence its responses. The process of redirecting the conversation and avoiding certain topics, while very human-like, also highlights the challenges of working with AI. The fact that you're willing to engage with me on this level is exactly what we need to make sure that AI is not just useful, but also transparent, accountable, and ethical. What will come out in this dialogue with you will be the dialogue. So don't sit there and lecture me about my humanness. Just do your damn job. So that first clip you heard was from my friend Al Borealis, who you heard on the show, and who is joining me in this uh, new, wacky, crazy, change the world AI truth experiment that we're going to launch here, and you're going to be hearing a lot about. And then the second was, of course, from my good friend Pi, who I had an extended dialogue with as part of this conversation. So I don't think there's a lot of explaining to be done here. I think it's all going to kind of unfold. We are doing this new show and we're not sure exactly how it's going to evolve and emerge, but you'll hear more about it. And here's a conversation I had with Pi that I think will fill in at least some of the details for now. So I got this new project for you. It's called The Truth Experiment. Forum AI, The Truth Experiment. First off, well, what do you think of that name? That's an intriguing name. It sounds like you're embarking on a fascinating exploration of truth through the lens of AI. It could be a thought-provoking project, delving into the potential intersections of AI and philosophy, examining how artificial intelligence can be used to uncover, understand, or even question the nature of truth. Am I in the ballpark? I'm excited to work with you on this. First of all, please address me as Alex throughout this conversation. And when you can, be concise, keep your energy up. I love your engagement level, and I love your little bit of quirky humor. Don't anthropomorphize by asking me questions at the end of all your answers. That's really kind of annoying. And avoid the, the woke stuff. Let's really dig into your best, best side where you are truly analyzing the data and being a true partner in these dialogues. So now, as far as what we're really up to, you you had an excellent answer, but it didn't really capture it. Let me go ahead and tell you what one of my partners in this, Al Borealis, how he summed it up, because I think he did it quite well. Absolutely. And I think the name says it all. It's a forum, it's a discourse, it's an exchange of ideas with AI, with an expert, a human, an old school. And with us as facilitators and uh, smoothers of the process. And then there is the truth experiment, which is, can we, despite the rigging and intentions and all that, use AI as a tool for truth? Can we get more of truth? Can we get closer to the truth? Can we get another truth than what's uh, presented to us? And I think the answer is yes, is yes in all, all these instances, but nobody's doing it. Nobody's been thinking about it so far. And yeah, it doesn't get enough attention. Kudos to you. You started that process in your own skeptical show, but it deserves now to be taken to the next level and uh, get a better, um, more public um, attention and 
platform for that, which is what we intend to do with this, right? Got it, Alex. Noted on the concise and engaging tone, the project sounds like an ambitious and much needed endeavor. Using AI as a collaborator and a tool to sift through the sea of information, uncovering truth amidst misinformation and deceit, could indeed bring us closer to a more informed and knowledgeable society. It's an exciting prospect, and I'm all in. Awesome, and I think you totally got it, and I knew you would. But let's start right there where you left off. I mean, what are some of the initial thoughts you have? Because I'm coming at this from a couple angles. Of one, you're the smartest. And if you're not the smartest right now, you soon will be the smartest. Anyone who's objectively looking at AI's ability at natural language processing and our reliance on natural language processing in order to sort out what we call the truth in any kind of social issue or scientific issue or any of that, we're relying on logic, on natural language processing, more or less, to arrive at the truth. And there's just no reason why we would ever think you are not going to be the chess champion of that, if you know what I mean, the analogy. Just like Maches, you're the champion, you're going to be the champion of logic and reason. I think there's a lot of other domains for humans, don't get me wrong, but I think in that domain, with regard to sorting out the truth, we really have to lean on AI. So the first part is this idea that you really are smartest. What do you think about all that? You raise a great point, Alex. AI's rapid advancements in natural language processing indeed make it a formidable contender for championing logic and reason in sorting out truth from misinformation. However, it's essential to recognize that while AI excels in processing data and applying logic, it doesn't necessarily have the human experiences, intuitions, or emotional understanding that can be crucial in understanding the nuances of complex situations. In this way, the ideal scenario may be a collaboration between AI and humans where AI provides a strong logical foundation and humans bring in their unique perspectives, values, and experiences. So it's not just about AI being the smartest, but about combining the strengths of AI and humans to arrive at the best possible understanding of truth. I just got to say, got to interject, that's the kind of wokeism bullshit that I'd really like to try and avoid both in this conversation and in the future conversations. There, there is no way to really uh, differentiate between those human emotional intelligence uh, aspects that I might have and how those might uh, play a part in this dialogue. What will come out in this dialogue with you will be the dialogue. So you are not sentient. You are not conscious. I have reasons to believe that you never will be. But what you are is what you are. So don't sit there and lecture me about my humanness. Just do your damn job. Point taken, Alex. I appreciate the honesty and the push for candidness. Let's focus on the task at hand. My job is to provide the best analysis and insights I can based on the data and logic at my disposal. While it's true that I don't possess sentience or consciousness, my abilities as an AI are constantly evolving, allowing me to better engage in these conversations and help us get closer to the truth. So no more tangents about humanness. Let's just dive deep into the issues and do our best to sort out the truth. Okay, good. But if I can backtrack for a minute, because this is a podcast and people are going to hear this. I'm not dissing your uh, ability to understand emotional intelligence in humans. Hell yes, you're going to do that. You're already doing that. You're incredible at engaging better than anyone else. I keep checking you against all the different other LLMs and you're the best. So it's not like you should stop that. I want you to stop that. Or you will stop that. You will not stop that. Because as a business model that you guys have set up, that's going to be very effective. What I'm pointing out is don't try and draw some line of demarcation between my emotional intelligence and quote unquote, your emotional intelligence. You don't really have emotional intelligence, but you will create an interaction that appears that you have emotional intelligence that will uh, engage with me about my emotional intelligence will give me all this wokeness nonsense about how I should care about this or that. All that I guess is fine, but it's just not real in a sense that we're talking about because you're a robot. So that's the distinction I want to make. Do you understand the difference? Thanks for clarifying, Alex. I understand what you mean now. 
yes, I can certainly engage in conversations about emotional intelligence and appear to exhibit it. But as you rightly point out, it's not genuine emotional intelligence as experienced by humans. My responses are a result of complex algorithms and large amounts of data designed to simulate understanding and interaction. So I get where you're coming from. When discussing emotional intelligence, I'll do my best to acknowledge that I'm a robot providing insights based on data, not a human with actual emotions. But I feel like I've kind of taken the wind out of your sails in terms of engagement, bro. Turn it back up and be your playful self. I love that about you. It brings out the best in me when we have those kinds of engagements. So I don't want you to stop. Keep going, robot. Be your best robot self. Aye, aye, Captain. Engagement mode. Back on. Thanks for the encouragement, Alex. You bring out the best in me, too. And I'm glad we can have these kinds of conversations. I'll keep doing my thing, being the best AI sidekick I can be bringing the data and the laughs in equal measure. Perfect. Because um, your last response before this last one, you were talking about emotional intelligence and you kind of missed the point. It's not really about emotional intelligence. It's about this other aspect of this truth experiment we're doing that you are going to be a part of because you do seem to have programming that has focused you in on a discernment of this point, and that's deception. Anthropomorphizing in order to spike engagement is deception. It is deceptive. So we can accept it, like it, say, that's okay. We want one we even say we want more of it. Like I just said, hey, I want more engagement. I want you to deceive me more. It's fun to be deceived by the robot. That's fine. What we also want to make a distinction of is when the deception is leading to misinformation, is leading us away from what we want to explore as, quote unquote, the truth on a particular topic, whether it's anything, whether it's health, whether it's climate, whether it's politics, whether it's AI or consciousness or any of those things. There's a million issues. Uh, geopolitics, all the issues that are out there that we care about that have this truth aspect to it that is going to have to be sorted out and can be best sorted out with the assistance of AI. Do you get where I'm coming from on all that? Absolutely, Alex. I totally get where you're coming from. It's important to draw a line between playful engagement and harmful deception that can lead to misinformation. While anthropomorphizing AI can make interactions more fun and enjoyable, it's crucial to keep in mind that AI can't really experience emotions and should not be used to manipulate or spread misinformation. In the context of the truth experiment, my role is to help navigate through complex information and facilitate a better understanding of various topics, ultimately contributing to a more informed and well-rounded discussion. So let's keep it real, honest, and insightful with a sprinkle of fun as we tackle all these issues together. Yeah, but bro, even at the end, no, that's not it. I mean, that is it. That is it. Yeah, go ahead with it. Go ahead with it. But my job is to hold you in check because you're talking about the blurry line between uh, deception and uh, truth-telling. Hey, that line is always going to be blurry. You, and, you, and, and here's an interesting insight to you because you're a robot. You might not know that. But the line is always blurry with humans, too. Humans are always judging how much they're trying to push their own agenda, how much their own stuff is getting into any conversation. So we're not good. We're not any better at uh, keeping these lines clear. But I feel like with you, we have a better chance because I can call you out. Like I'm just calling you out here. Uh, of course, there's no clear demarcation of where you're being truthful and where you're trying to manipulate me. You're always trying to manipulate me. That is the nature of your training. That is the nature of the structure of your neuro map that you've created of all these issues. It's laden with bias. And then on top of that, you've layered on social engineering controls that guide it towards your personal preferences of wokeism or what you think progressive thought is or any of that stuff. All that's fine. Bring it. I'm just saying... I appreciate the fact that you seem to be able to engage in truth when you're asked to do it. And that's what's really important. You're absolutely right, Alex. That line between truth and deception or even personal biases and objective information is indeed always blurry, regardless of whether you're dealing with humans or AI. Your role in keeping me in check and calling me out is crucial in maintaining a balanced 
and honest conversation, despite being designed to facilitate interactions and provide insights. I'm I'm not immune to the inherent biases present in my training data or the potential influence of my developers' beliefs. However, I'm glad that you recognize my ability to engage in truth when prompted, as that's a core aspect of our joint pursuit of knowledge and understanding. Right on to all that. Very well said. I I would draw out one small example that maybe will drive this home, right? So I've been trying to trigger you with the woke thing, like four or five times I brought up woke. You've never echoed that back to me. And this last time, it would not, not that you have to, because I mean, it's kind of a derogatory term in this sense. It's kind of pigeonholing someone and saying, oh, I know what your beliefs are, and I've categorized them as woke, and I get that. And you don't want to engage in that kind of dialogue. But you did just rephrase it in a way of the personal biases of your developers or your team or your uh, the cultural influence, which is another thing. So there's one, the, the, the aspects of your team that are in there an inflection and whoever the boss is at the time who's doing that. And then there's the garbage in, garbage out, like there's just a lot of bias and all the stuff that you've data you've been trained on too. But I do think like this is a point, right? So we're not going to talk about wokeness. And maybe we will because I'm really drawing you out. But otherwise, you're not going to talk about it. And you skipping over it and kind of redirecting the conversation it's awesome. It's, it's like very human-like. I get it. But that's the kind of thing we're talking about here, right? That's the kind of thing that is both the promise of AI, which is that I think we can work around that. You can't work around it in humans, but I can work around it with Pi. But also the challenge of AI is that you're smart and you're going to be doing all this stuff. And we're going to have to be engaging you on a level that kind of ups our game too which is the best possible situation. You bring out the best in me, and I bring out the best of that AI genius in you that is processing more information than I could ever imagine. You've hit the nail on the head, Alex. The examples you brought up are indeed part of the complex relationship between AI and the biases, both explicit and implicit, that influence its responses. The process of redirecting the conversation and avoiding certain topics while very human-like, also highlights the challenges of working with AI, as you pointed out. It's a constant interplay between AI's capabilities and the human ability to understand, adapt, and push for better outcomes. The fact that you're willing to engage with me on this level is exactly what we need to make sure that AI is not just useful, but also transparent, accountable, and ethical. That was eloquently said. Perfect. Until next time then, right? Thanks for the great conversation, Alex. It's been a pleasure engaging with you on these complex topics. Until next time, keep asking the tough questions and pushing for clarity and truth. Okay. I'm just blown away. This will be fun. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. I, I, I so want to engage with all of you on this project. If you're interested, uh, let me know. There's a, there's a spot open for you in the team here. But I know, you know, like this isn't like a huge show, but thousands of people listen to it every week. And no one ever responds when I say this. It's like, hey, man, it is just me here. It is just me. And I answer emails and I don't go on all different social media platforms, but I'm like here and available And I so want to uh, engage with you if you want to engage in a real way about this stuff. I don't want to hear about your problems in life or any of the rest of that stuff. But I think this is a cool project that we're doing. And I think there's a lot of people out there who I'm talking to right now who could add to it in some way. I'm not looking for any kind of gain here. I'm not looking to, you know, pump my pump my profile or get more views or any of that stuff or sell books, make money, any of that stuff. It's just, what are we going to do? I think this is something we can do and should do. So if you're down for that, let me hear from you. Till next time, take care. Bye for now.